What's up guys? Sorry it's been so long. I know I keep saying that, but I, I really am lazy and afraid of the cold. So uh, it's really, really cold here in Washington uh, where I live. Uh, so I haven't been out here, not to mention I've been waiting on a bunch of parts and those parts have arrived. So I've picked up an LS1 intake I've gotten all new front suspension, bushings, ball joints, upper control arms. I refabbed the lower control arms like you saw in a previous video. I've got uh, main bearings, rod bearings, oh, lots of, lots of stuff. I, I can't even go through it all. Um, assembly lube. So I think we're ready to start assembling this 5.3 liter for the Firebird. Without talking too much and boring you, I think we'll just fire up the heater and get to putting some stuff in this block. Stick around.
Okay guys, it's been about a week. I ran into a slight snag and that's with torquing down the main cap bolts. I bought the cheap Harbor Freight uh, torque wrench and I think I was just over torquing them. That thing wasn't letting me know at all when they were at their spec. I, you, I started out with 15, uh, like it says in the paperwork that I printed off and that thing was just, it wasn't clicking, it wasn't doing anything. So I ordered another torque wrench uh, off Amazon that had super good reviews, like 12,000 reviews and it was four and a half stars. It's the Lexavon. Um, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos on it and everybody said that they've had super good luck with it. So I've picked up that torque wrench. I had to wait for it to get here, obviously. And I've torqued the inside main cap bolts down to, on their first pass to the 15 foot-pounds. Uh, I've also watched a bunch of YouTube videos on reusing your main cap and your rod cap bolts. Apparently, they are torqued to angle and you can use them up to three times. So I'm reusing those and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on if you don't have an angle gauge what you should torque them down to. So we're going to go with that and hopefully we don't break any. Uh, if we do then I'll just chalk it up to uh, my luck. And if we don't then great. So stick around and we'll get to torquing these things down. did 60 foot pounds of torque on the inners and we did 55 foot pounds of torque on the outers and that's pretty close to what I was seeing on YouTube for reusing those a um, couple guys said do the inners at 65 but I got afraid because it seemed like a lot. So I think 60 will do just fine on those. So I'm going to get some pistons prepped and we'll throw pistons in this thing next. So stick around. Screwed up. Apparently on an LS engine, when you're putting the pistons in, if they're the stock, you know, if you're using the stock pistons, there's a, I'll call it a witness mark, but there's a, a dimple right here on the piston. And on bank one, so pistons one, three, five, and seven, that dot is supposed to correlate to, I don't know if you guys can see it. I can't see it because I'm blind as a bat. But there's a large chamfer right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Flat edge chamfer. And that chamfer on that first bank, one, three, five, and seven, is supposed to face forward towards the front of the engine. On pistons two, four, six, and eight, the second bank, that's supposed to go backwards so towards the back of the engine and i had two four six and eight installed already with that dot or that chamfer facing forward so i had to take all four of those pistons out and flip them around so that that dot was facing backwards and now i'll put one three five and seven in with that dot or that chamfer facing forward and I, I think according to YouTube the all-knowing I think that'll be right there's something to do with clearances if they're in backwards you don't get your clearance between I guess the rod and the the weights on the crank um, and then you get failure so we'll see if I've got it right so 
Yesterday, I started to do a little bit of filming on putting rings on these pistons, and my GoPro battery die was like 30%, and that thing just shut off. So GoPros are awesome until they're not. And the batteries on the GoPros, I have the 9, it's not the greatest. So I'll have to get some more batteries or maybe a charging station or something. Um, because I keep having to break these videos up over long periods of time uh, due to, you know, being busy and anyway, it's long, sad sob story. Um, so let's see if we can get rings put on this piston and then we'll finish putting the pistons in and hopefully, hopefully we don't have any problems. So what I do first is I take an old oil ring and I just scrape it around in here just to try and clean out as much of that carbon and whatnot as I can it works fairly well so we'll just go around here in these grooves I'm not really trying to get all of the carbon out. I'm just trying to make a little bit of a smooth, just trying to make a little bit of a smooth surface for the new rings to fit on. Do a little ring around the rosy. All right. Okay, then you take one of your little curly cues here, and this goes on super easy. Just bang, done. And then you have these super thin oil rings. So just tuck one of the edges down here we I do the bottom one first I think most people do and then you just kind of wind it around try not to scratch the piston okay so that's the bottom one then you got to take another one. And these don't really, these little oil rings don't really have a direction. Like there's no top and bottom. You just slap them in there. Make sure you only have one. And then you do the top of your cubert. Pull it out so you don't scratch it. And then if it spins nice and easy, you did it right. If it doesn't spin nice and easy, you did it wrong. Now this box, I got these Mala or Molly. And this box, they're, they're all compartmentalized. And this box obviously labeled top groove and second groove. So I take my second groove ring, stay, and these are marked. So these have an M on the top, and that goes towards the top of the piston on the second groove. 
So I just kind of put it in there like that. There's a tool you can get for these, but I don't have it. So I just kind of burp, spread her on out and drop her down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that one. And then I'll orientate that so that the gap is on the top. And then you take your top ring piston and these have, I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but there's a little dimple right here. That denotes the top. So obviously that goes towards the top of the piston. And same thing, you just put it in the groove, you kind of spread it open and drop it in. And I'll orientate that one towards the bottom. And then I'll spin this oil ring around so that it's on the side. And spread this other oil ring around so it's on the other side and then we have our gaps oriented our rings are on and we're good to go there's a groove on the rod and there's a little tab on the bearing so that's gonna sit down in there like so and then I try to make sure that they're even then I get myself some goo. Assembly lube. Run that all up in there, all gooey like. And then I usually have a rag. I left it over there. Then I dump some of this motor oil on it all around these rings and get it all blah, nice and worked in there then we have our dot and that's going to go towards the front So, now I have my handy dandy Harbor Freight ring compressor. Dilly Bob, this thing from being from Harbor Freight, this thing actually works really well. Now watch it make a liar out of me. All right, then we just bang her on home. Or something. So, works fairly okay. And then I guess you just crank this sucker around. Yeah. 
I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, but it's the easiest way that I've found to line these pistons up. So like I was saying, these GoPros are great unless they aren't. I've got 57% battery life. It keeps telling me uh, that the battery's low or it's powering off. So I don't know if there's something wrong with it, something wrong with the battery. It is pretty cold out here in the shop. I don't have the heater running, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, so I've got it plugged into power now. We'll see if that has any effect whatsoever. But back to the pistons. I thought I had a great system set up as far as what piston I took out when and what cap and I placed them all in order, marked everything. And then when I put the pistons back in and I'm pretty sure 98.7653% sure that I've got the pistons in the right bores so in other words the piston i took out of the bore i think went back in the bore the rod caps however i got mixed up a couple of them and it took me some trial and error and quite a bit of time to figure out which cap went with which rod so i've got it all straightened out now learn from my mistakes keep your rod caps with your rods so as soon as you take the cap off and take the piston and rod out put that cap back on otherwise you're gonna be me and don't don't be me uh so like i was saying i've got the crank in it's all torqued down i've got all the pistons in and the right caps on those pistons now so let's get those rod caps torqued down to 45 foot pounds i believe i'll double check my documentation uh and we'll get those things torqued down okay so they say 45 to 50 foot pounds so we're gonna do a couple passes i'm starting at 25. Let's go the right way. <laughs> I'm a retard. All right, now we'll do our second pass. We'll go 45.
All right, fellas. 45 foot pounds on those and she spins. Spins fairly easy too. I think that's gonna do it for this little video. It's cold out here. I'm missing football. Uh, next time, maybe we'll cut down the windage tray. I think we have to cut down the windage tray so it'll fit under the oil pan I bought. Oh, it seems to be a common thing that everybody's doing. Um, yeah, we'll just go for it. You know, I, uh, I want to get the front suspension all put back together, so maybe we'll do that next time. Uh, lots to do still, and I feel like I'll probably never get this done. And uh, even if I do, it probably won't work. But hey, it's fun and we're learning, or I'm learning. You guys probably already know. Um, that'll be that. Thank you guys for tuning in to another chaotic episode, and I will see you in the next one. Peace, and I'm out.